Hey, good morning, everyone. Great to see you all this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, if you will, please rise. Let's begin worship. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes. This morning, we've got just a few announcements before we continue on with our worship service this morning. First of all, calling all superheroes. We need more superheroes to come to Vacation Bible School. So if you are three and a half through just finished fifth grade, going into sixth grade, we want you to sign up. We've got these sign-up sheets that are in the back there. There's also some down at the bottom of the stairs. Be sure that you sign up, all the kids. Our registration's a little slow this year, and we know we've got more of you guys out there that want to come and enjoy Vacation Bible School, and you'll hear just a little bit more about it in uh, a, little, uh, a little while later with our children's message. Also, you adults, we're even giving you a chance this year to be heroes and come and enjoy an adult-level Bible study based on the same things that the kids will be learning. 
and Tommy Britton will be leading this, but we're asking you to register so that we have all the names and know how many. Casey's got handouts, or we need a room twice the size that we are already planning to put you in. We need to know that you're coming. Um, so if you could register your attendance also, we would love to have the adults come out and be part of Vacation Bible School. We have a lot of adults who have come out that are helping with Vacation Bible School this year. And I just want to thank all of you who have already signed up to do so. So I think we've got that covered. Now the rest of you can just get to do a Bible study of your own during that time. So uh, come on out. Also, Ladies Devotion Lunch is coming up this coming Wednesday at 11.30 at Magnolia's. And Greg Rolls, most of you who grew up in Myrtle Beach know who that is. He will be our guest speaker. And I hear that he uh, gives a great testimony. And I hear he might even do a little bit of singing for you guys as well. So be sure to come out. Magnolia's at 26, upstairs at um, 11.30 on Wednesday. There are other not? Um, and then, of course, we have our regular Bible challenge that uh, Pastor Joel has put out. And I have a regular weekly Bible study uh, upstairs at Magnolia's at 1.15 every Wednesday. And what we do, like this coming Wednesday, we will study this past week's scripture. So you've already read it, and we're going to go through it. So we'd love to have more people. It's not just women. It's men and women at 1.15 on Wednesdays upstairs at Magnolia's. Some people even come early, and there is no way I can read that. Oh, the schedule. <laughs> um some people come early and get food and take it upstairs. Um, so join us. Just a reminder, on the 23rd of July, we will be having our fifth Sunday on the fourth Sunday. In other words, we're going to have a combined service on um, July 23rd. The Vacation Bible School kids will be there to celebrate what they've learned, sing a couple songs for you guys. We're going to have a church-wide picnic afterwards, hamburgers, hot dogs, and we're going to have inflatables for the kids. So be sure to join us. We will meet in the traditional space in the sanctuary that day. And then the next Sunday, that's usually the fifth Sunday, we'll have our own services that day so we'll go back to the to the regular contemporary and traditional space on that day um, for those who have signed up for vacation bible school to teach we still need um safe sanctuary sanct sanct forms regarding safe sanctuary policies need to be signed and they are in the um, other building where the tr traditional, where the sanctuary is, they're back there by where Cynthia sits, kind of all, in fact, all right in front of my office, they are there. So please pick them up if you've not had a chance to do so. Also, Saturday and Sunday, this coming Saturday and Sunday, we will be decorating at the North Campus for Vacation Bible School. So if you want to come up and help for an hour or two, we'll be there 10 to 2 on Saturday, 2 to 5 on Sunday. So this is next, this coming Saturday and Sunday, a week from, week from now. We could use your extra help up there as we decorate it and make it welcoming for the kids. We'd love to have you come. Are there other, any other announcements for the good of, of the church today? All right, if we could just stand and greet those around you with the peace of Christ. All right, if y'all will, please remain standing and let's continue worship.
bigger than my faith and struggles steal my breath away when my back's pressed up against the wall with the weight of my worries stacked up tall strong enough to hold it all and I will cast my cares on you you're the anchor of my hope the only one who's in control I will cast my cares on you or oh, trade the troubles of this world for your peace inside my soul this war is not what I would have chosen you see the future that no one knows yet you're still good when I can't see the working of your hands you're holding it all and I will cast my cares on you you're the anchor of my hope the only one who's in control I will cast my cares on you I'll trade the troubles of this world for your peace inside my soul Cast my cares, I will cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will cast my cares, I will cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will cast my cares, I will cast my cares on you. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares, I will. Cast my cares on you. I will cast my cares on you. You're the anchor of my hope, the only one who's in control. I will cast my cares on you. Trade the troubles of this world. Please be seated, and at this time, we invite our children to come forward for the children's moment. Good morning. I'm so happy to see you. So let me tell you, if you are on this side, like kind of right there in front of the table, you're not going to be able to see maybe because we have a special visitor. So can we scooch just a little bit so everybody can see because it's going to be so exciting. I promise you, you're going to want to see it. I'm so excited to see so many of you guys here today. And I'll tell you, we have a special guest. And that special guest is here to invite all of you to join us at Hero Hotline Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School is coming up next week. And at Hero Hotline, we are all heroes. Let's welcome our special guest. Let's see if he's here. Oh, Super Mirror. Are you here? Oh, Ta-da! there he is. Let me uncover your head just. There we go. Everybody say good morning. 
can you see him I'm pretty ready good? For the hero hotline. All right. If you can't see, then scooch over here where you can see in front. Now's your chance. Okay. I, I hear it. Thank Hello. you, Super Mirror, for being here. We are so glad to see you. Way to answer the call to Hero Hotline Vacation Bible School. Thank you. I hear that our time at Hero Hotline involved, involved great music, fun, games, super science, and lots of learning. That's right, Super Mirror. While at Hero Hotline, we will learn about how we can work together to join God in helping others. All this will happen at the Hero Hotline headquarters. How are we going to learn to work together? Well, I'm glad you asked. We'll learn through the ways God calls us to be heroic and by learning about some great stories from the Bible. Sign me up. I'm ready for this. What else will we do at Hero Hotline? Well, there will be uh, cool music, exciting science experiments, creative crafts, I'll and go. fun games at recreation. Tell me more so I can let all my Mirrorcat buddies know too. Okay, how about this? <laughs> During each session, Super Mirror, we will learn the hotline tip. I will say it and then you will repeat it. Okay, are you ready, Super Mirror? Heroes are called to follow Jesus. Heroes are called to follow Jesus. Good. Heroes are called to help others. Heroes are called to help others. Heroes are called to listen to God. Heroes are called to listen to God. Yep, and heroes are called to show grace. Heroes are called to show grace. Doesn't that sound fun? It does sound fun. What do you think, boys and girls? Doesn't that sound fun? Yes, yes I think it will be. Um, who's going to plan on joining us at Vacation Bible School next week at the Hero Hotline? Me. <laughs> awesome. So not tomorrow. Tomorrow's a Monday. But the next Monday is when it will start on July the 17th. And it will be every evening from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. You can get there a couple minutes early to make sure you get registered, okay? Parents, we have registration going on now. I believe there's a QR code in the steeple, maybe. You can do it on the Realm app. There's a link. There's all sorts of ways uh, to register your children's attendance. Super Mirror. Yes. Anything else you like to say? Yes. <laughs> no? Okay. We're called together to serve God. That's right. We are called to, together to serve God, and we hope all of our friends here will too. All right. Will you um, say a prayer with me before we go to Little Church? Dear God, Dear God we thank you for Super Mirror and all of his excitement for Vacation Bible School. More importantly, More importantly, we are so excited, are so excited to, have to have all of our children next week. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, boys and girls. See you at Vacation Bible School. Everybody say bye, Super Mirror. All right, anybody that um, is going to Little Church, I see Miss Megan waiting for you at the back door. You can use your walking feet back there. Super Mirror told me he's got so many engagements, he needs an agent. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, at this time, we take time to continue to worship God through our tithes and offerings. And if you will notice in your steeple, we're a little bit behind on our giving this year for the ministries that we need to do to keep up with our children and youth and the adult ministries that we have. So um, I would like for you to pray about that. And if you're able to give just a little bit more, please do so. Uh, at this time, I invite our ushers to come forward. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, who's 
Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses The one who opened up the ocean I need you now to do the same thing for me Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you now A rock, a rock of ages I'm standing your faithfulness I'm calling on the God of Mary whose favor rests upon the lowly I know with you all are possible I'm calling on the God of David who made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath but I've got my own giant so oh God my God I need you oh God my God I need you now how I
Thank you all so much. At this time, we go to the Lord in prayer. The Lord already knows our needs, but we want a relationship with Him. We want to take time and actually talk with Him. And as we share our prayers, even out loud and in a few moments, other people can be in prayer for us. God wants this relationship, wants this communication back and forth from us. So let us take our time now to go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving Lord, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for the chance to come here and worship you, to celebrate you and all the gifts and promises that you give us each and every day. We thank you for the time to come here and fellowship with one another, to build each other up, to encourage each other, to learn your word and your will for us in our lives. Lord, we praise you. We praise your holy and gracious name. Father, we go through life and life can be hard. You never promised us that it wouldn't be hard at times, but you promised us that we would never walk through life alone. That you would be there for us. As the band just sang, the same God of Moses and David and Mary is the same God that cares for us today. And your presence of the Holy Spirit comforts us and guides us as we go through life's challenges. So Father, hear now those that we lift up in prayer who need you, who need your love, your care, your grace, your peace, who need you more than ever. Father, you know their every need. You knew them before we even lifted them up, but now we can be in prayer together. As one body here at the church, we can lift these people up in our prayer time to show you that we trust you, that we rely on you, that we lift each other up and that we we are here for one another just as you were here for us Lord you have so many things to teach us and you sent your son here to teach us how to love how to accept how to forgive and how to pray so at this time Father God we lift up to you that prayer our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ooh, this scripture in the, in the steeple is wrong. So the, ste the scripture on the screen is right. Exodus um, chapter 1, 8 through chapter 2, 10. And it's a little bit lengthy, but it tells a beautiful story. So let's go ahead and hear the words of God. 
Now a king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them or they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them when they forced labor. They built supply cities, Pith, Python, Ramesses, sorry, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them in the birth stool, if it is a son, kill him. But if it is a daughter, you shall let them live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let, let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you not done this? And allowed the boys to live. The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are coming, are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw him into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she hid him, no, when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bidium and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the banks of the river. Her sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw, saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then her sister, then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as his son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. These are the words of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. What a beautiful, beautiful story of God's intervention, love, and care. You know, they say behind every great man is his mother. 
Someone imagine the mothers of these well-known sons making the following comments. Mrs. Morris said, Sam, stop that tapping with your fingers on the table. It's driving me crazy. Come on, guys. You know? Not even you? Okay. Mrs. Armstrong, Lynn laughed at me. Mrs. Armstrong said, Neil has no more business taking flying lessons than the man in the moon. <laughs> this is a rough crowd today. I'm telling you. Well, let's have it this one. Abraham Lincoln declared. Now, this is something he said, so I'm quoting it. So whether you agree or not, it doesn't matter. No man is poor who has a godly mother. You agree with that one? You agree with that one. One of the greatest gifts that you can give your children is to be a godly parent, a man or a woman. This morning, I want to consider the example of one godly mother taken from the pages of Exodus that we just read, the mother of Moses, um, Jochebed. Jochebed was an Israelite, one of God's chosen people. She was also the member of the tribe of Levi, from which the, came the priest and those who would carry out the duties of the tabernacle and later the temple. She was a godly woman, and she stood on her faith. She had a good, close relationship with God as her sovereign Lord and King. But her dilemma? Well, Pharaoh was her dilemma. She lived in a hostile environment. Jochebed's life was no bed of roses, more a bed of thorns. Born in Egypt as the daughter of Levi, she also knew and only knew slavery. The Egyptians dreaded the Israelites and they made life difficult for them because of Pharaoh telling them that they need to take care of these Israelites, make life hard for them so they won't multiply and come up against us. He says in Exodus 1 that we just read, he says, I want you to have them lay in bricks. I want you to put them in the field. I want their work to be demanding as hard as it can be. Now, Jochebed could have whined and complained about the difficulties of life in Egypt, but Jochebed would not allow herself to surrender to the hopelessness of life as a slave in Egypt. In hatred and fear of the Hebrews, Pharaoh ordered the killing of all the Israelite male children by casting them into the crocodile-infested Nile River. And if you disobeyed, he would take your life or at least put you in prison. But Jochebed refused to go with the flow. She refused to bow down to Egypt's demands. In our reading in Exodus 2, 1 through 2, she has a baby, knowing that if it's a boy, what Pharaoh has said. But she doesn't care because she knows she believes in a God who will take care of him. She has a baby, and it's a boy. It's a boy. And when she saw him, she knew that he was a godly child. So she hid him for three months. I don't know quite how you hide an infant crying when they're hungry and uh, all, but she hid him for three months. Jochebed knew the decree Pharaoh had made, but she knew that her child's life, God had said to her, your child's life will not be forfeited. She knew that even her life would be taken away if 
this baby were found. The decree went against everything basically humane and moral and right in the eyes of God and in the eyes of Jochebed. So Jochebed, fearing God more than man, and fear meaning respecting God, knowing God, trusting God, made the decision to have the baby. By seeking to have this baby, by seeking to uh, preserve Moses' life, she raised the life of Israel's future lawgiver and leader out of the exodus of Egypt. That's that baby that she had. It was Moses. So after three months, she takes the baby. She knew eventually she couldn't hide him anymore. So she takes the baby and, and she makes a basket that will float in the reeds. And she lays the baby in the basket. And then she asks the baby's older sister, keep an eye on that basket and, and tell me what happens to your little brother. She knew that Pharaoh's daughter comes down to that river. This was not a haphazard place of placing this baby. She knew that the Pharaoh's daughter came down there to bathe. But she was trusting God. I can imagine that she went home and she cried and she just prayed and she prayed and she prayed, please, Lord, take care of my baby. She probably thought she might not see her baby again, but she was trusting God no matter what. Jochebed had faith in God, faith that God was going to protect this baby and protect her. And only because she trusted the Lord could she abandon her son like she did. It is not easy. Parents out there, can you imagine having to give your child up knowing that he, if he's found, he may even be killed? But she trusted God was able to work in this situation. God was in control. Children are murdered every single day, but she says, God, I don't understand why you are allowing this to happen, but here I am giving you my son. Please take care of him. And then Exodus Two continues to tell us that the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe, as she had done, as Jochebed knew. And they find the little baby in the basket. And Pharaoh's daughter loves this little baby. Yes, it's a little baby boy, but she doesn't want this baby to be killed any more than Jochebed does. So, Moses' older sister comes and she says to Moses, I mean, she says to the Pharaoh's daughter, do you want me to find someone to nurse this baby, to take care of this baby? Because she knows the Pharaoh's daughter can't do it. She's never had a baby. So who does she allow to feed this baby and nurse this baby and teach this baby? Jochebed. Joke bed. This baby's mother gets paid to nurse this little boy until eventually this little boy goes to live with Pharaoh's daughter. Jochebed being a godly mother, I can see her telling the stories of God's love and protection and trust. And until this little boy Moses has to go live with the Pharaoh's daughter at maybe five or six years old, he has already been influenced by this Israelite mom who loves the Lord, 
more than life herself. Now, how did Jochebed get through that? Only because she had faith in God. Only because. It would have been so hard to leave a baby there, knowing that baby may not live. But she got through it because she had faith in that one sovereign God. Are you trusting in God today? Are you letting go and allowing God to work in your life today? She had to let go and let God. She didn't have a choice. But she did it in peace. John 14, 27 says, Peace I live, leave with you. My peace I give you. I give to you not as the world gives, so don't be troubled or afraid. These are the words of Jesus. Life is hard. We face storms. We face valleys. And we can feel alone. During it all. Do you ever feel like you're alone? Going through a challenge in life? Does loneliness ever engulf you? Does a sense of frustration and abandonment prevail sometimes in your life? A gnawing sense of emptiness resulting from a feeling of disappointment or defeat. You ever experienced those emotions? Isaiah 43, 2 says, 2 and 3 says, When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Jochebed leaned on those kinds of words and knowledge of God. And I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. I don't know if any of you know the song, You'll Never Walk Alone. Ah, I can see a couple of little people. It's actually a show from a, um, a song from a show tune in 1945, Rogers and Hammerstein's musical Carousel. In the second act of the musical, Nettie F Flower, Fowler, the cousin of the protagonist, Julie Jordan, sings You'll Never Walk Alone to comfort Julie when her husband, Billy Bigelow, the male lead, stabs himself with a knife after trying to run away after attempted robbery. Listen to part of the song. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone alone. This is what God's message is to you today. You will never have to go through life alone. God is always there, and God gives us people who will be there with us and for us as well, just like the Pharaoh's daughter who came in and helped with little baby Moses. The Holy Spirit 
is here to comfort us in life's difficulties. Even when the storms of life appear hopeless and overpowering, God is here. God is a constant presence in no matter what we're going through. After Jesus' resurrection, he told the disciples, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. We are not complete without the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. Allow that teacher, allow that comforter, allow that advocate, allow that leader to be part of who you are. And you will never walk alone. When we walk through a storm and feel alone and question if God cares, we can unequivocally know that he cares more for us than we will ever ever be able to understand as human beings. He sees us. He sees everything that we're going through. He listens to our every word. He is our shelter and our strength, and his Holy Spirit is always ready to help us in times of trouble. Always. So this morning, just like Jochebed, I say to you the words of the song again. So hold your head high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there is a golden sky. Walk on. Walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone because God's got your back. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you give us so much, but the one thing that you give us is your presence and your guide and your comfort and your peace through your Holy Spirit. Allow us to allow the Holy Spirit to indwell within us, to give us that strength, to give us that peace, so that we know we never walk alone. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Michelle. If you will, please rise. Let's sing together our final worship song this morning. Love is but a song to sing.
knowing that you are not alone with the presence of God our Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 